Hello, it's Matt Heaton uh, here to talk to you about the key of D. Uh, now the key of D in Irish music is an awfully good one to know because pretty much all the tunes are in D. Or maybe they aren't. Maybe they are. Uh, but So I am in standard tuned guitar and I'm gonna, just going to give you a few ideas on some ways around the key of D in standard tuning. Because the big problem with standard tuning is this is your out of the box D chord. And that, that, my friends, is a kind of puny little chord. Um, the low note is there. It's not, not really very low compared to like a, a G or an E or an F or something like that. It's kind of in the middle. And the other problem is this note here, that F sharp on the top. Your ear just goes right to that. You know, all you want to hear is... And that's not really, like, the sound I'm going for. So... Uh, give you a couple, a few different ideas. First thing is to just get rid of that F sharp and just play this. That's easy enough. You just kind of, you know, lift this off and mute it. And then when you, so now I, assuming that you know that in D you're going to be playing one, four, and five, which would be D, G, and A. Those are your main chords you have to worry about. Um, B minor would be the six. E minor is the two. Those are nice ones to have around too. Um, but but primarily. Um, the one, four, and five. So if I if I use this, I can go over to the G chord by just doing that. So what I've done is I'm playing second finger on the low G, muting the fifth string, open, open, and then there's that D there and mute the top. And then for an A chord, I'm playing mute, not playing the low string. A on the 5th string, 2nd fret on the 4th um, string, and a muted G string. This is still here, but I'm not really aiming at it, and that's muted, so... So really, what am I playing? I'm playing two notes, right? I'm not playing the entire uh, six strings, um, which, because this gets the point across, I think. So right there, you kind of have a, a, a little nicer palette uh, to choose from, I think. Um, one thing I did, I played the C sharp on under the A chord, which gives you a little bass line. Da, da, da. It leads up to it a little nicely. Da, 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 da. Um, so that's these are those are just kind of basic, hopefully fairly easy chords. Um, none of them really use more than two fingers. Now, if we want to make it sound a little better, we don't have a low D because we're not in drop D. Um, what we can do is double the Ds, the low Ds. And what I mean by that is you've got your open D here, and then if I add to that the D on the fifth fret of the sixth string, or sorry, fifth fret of the fifth string, so the A string, like you do to tune, right? Or used to before, you know, we all have the clip-on things. If I do that, and then add the... This is kind of the, um, the, the, the basic, like, drop D D chord, but it works if you're not in drop D because you're... By it's it, the notes you're playing are D D A D. So even without that low D, it still sounds a lot thicker. You get a really nice kind of low drone going with the the, the, the fretted string and the, the open string. And then the the rest of the chords I'm going to play from this position are pretty similar. I'm going to use the same G, same A might do my little, you know, A over C sharp, back up to the D. If I'm feeling frisky, I could also do, I could include the third in this by playing, right, the, on the, that's the third finger on the fourth fret of the fourth string. 
and then I could even go up to the G, implying a G chord, and then back to my A. So listen to what I can do with that. So that's all like this. These chords are all over an A. Which if I wanted to be fancy, I would call a dominant pedal. But I won't. Um, so, but that, that's a nice, a nice move you can make um, if you're trying to like build some suspense. Right, and then back to always back to your home there with the, the, the all the D's. Um, one other chord that's very nice to reach in this position: B minor. Okay, this is a nice B minor. Uh, it's B second fret on the A string. The F sharp is on the fourth fret of the D string. The G I am not fretting. I am actually kind of playing it because I like the way it sounds. And the D is still here. Now this, that's pretty crunchy. That's pretty crunchy. Do you like it? You don't have to like it, but I kind of like it. Um, depends on the context. I wouldn't, you know, maybe if the tune were in B minor, that might not be my go-to, but in, in D, eh. You know, you be the judge. Uh, now, so the other place you can use that trick is up high. And I did some of these voicings in the in the another video with the, the partial voicing idea, where but what it is is you're playing the D on the low sixth string, tenth fret, and then the then mute and then an open D, and then you can get your A up here on the tenth fret and then your F sharp goes there, and the sound of that D is very kind of tubby, kind of you know a different sound than that one. They're the same note, but really different tone. So when you play them together, they mix together, especially if they're in tune. They mix together in a really cool way, at least what I think is a cool way. Um, so this this is a D chord. It's based on a bar chord, right? But you're just playing the, the good notes. And then the F sharp, you can go up to a G chord, imply a G chord by that pinky down on the 12th fret and then for your A chord we're going to do the the D over F sharp voicing which is you know like a D chord but F sharp on the instead of up here it's down here and you can move that around so I do this a lot one of the things I like about it is you can you can kind of keep this going and then you can do a little fakey pipes thing, little regulators. All right. So those all, um, it all revolves around the fact that this is kind of providing a nice drone. Uh, the one other place that you can use these voice, uh, this type of idea up here is to steal from like a, a G shape and put, uh, so your same notes here, the, except different fingers. Your third finger, mute, open, then your first finger on the seventh fret, D, and then an A with your um, pinky on the tenth fret. So it's ten, mute, open, seven, ten, mute. Okay, this gives you a really like open driving kind of. That's a really a great sound. And then if you want to do like a you know a four five one in that, you can do this would be kind of a D over F sharp sound. Going up to a G. Is it a full G chord? No, but it has a G in it, so it'll do. And then I'm just playing an a, uh, C sharp down there. Again, super crunchy, but it has the effect of acting like an A chord if you treat it right, you know? So you can go. Okay, and back to that. So
so I'm going to I'm just going to play so these are three different sort of voicing areas. There's this. There's this. There's this. I guess four different areas. There's this. So I'm going to just mess around playing. I'm just going to play D's, G's and A's in and kind of tr show how the different these different areas sound. There's that one. Now we're going to add the... This trick. Then we're going to move up high. I'm doing them right they all have an, all, a very D drony kind of a sound and you don't miss not having a low D string right that you would get in drop D tuning um, so now would I you know I might argue that drop D and dadgad ultimately sound better in the key of D because they do have that that, that extra low end but I think that that you can you can kind of get around uh, doing doing these things in standard. Every tuning, it's just you're they they all do some things well and some things not so well. So it just is a matter of what fingering battles you want to you want to fight really. So uh, so thank you very much to you for watching and thanks to Shannon for inviting me on on the channel to uh, to talk backing. So again, if you if you uh, have any questions in the comments or anything, just please let me know. Uh, I'd love to help out and hope to hope to get play to play tunes with you in person pretty